she will start to feel much much more and at the other side too same thing mm. for the men when you do that you s- and you consciously start to relax that entire area yeah. you will become much more sensitive so a very tiny movement can be absolutely amazing because you're consciously aware of it mm. and then you can last much longer because you're much more in in a um, in touch with what yeah. is going on in your body <laughs> Both men and women have to get into their bodies. Yeah. Uh, and that's the problem. We get put in the school. We have to dissociate from our bodies and our need to connect and move. Yeah. From a very young age. So you like have What do you mean by moving? Yeah, moving. We want to move. <laughs> You're fucking dancing. Yeah, yeah. We want to dance. We want yeah. to play. We want to jump. We want to do sports. That's our bodies. But we cannot. We have to sit and look to the, 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 the gray board. Or as yeah. it so that's the first thing. Because mm. this is stupid. This our brain is, is so, f- so stupid. It always like fucks our shit up too. Like, and I'm just gonna like yeah. do this to make sure we're good. This, so, th- so one thing I think as man is you have to get connected with your body. And the yeah. best ways for a man is to fight. Yeah, 100%. Like, I think that's how we met. Uh, like for those that are listening in, so that you just don't know that uh, Nico is just some random guy that has like this very soothing voice mm. where he could like <laughs> whisper you to sleep and tell you bedtime stories and make you feel things you've never felt. About <laughs> through another like hypnosis, but I I met Nico because I was in a point in my business life, and this is going to also relate because, for example, a lot of the people listening to this are entrepreneurs, mm. and they they care about theory, they care about all of that, but one of the best things they could actually do is just meet you because. Mm. Most of the times you actually don't talk about this theories. Most of the time you create the space and the environment to real for them to realize mm. that they need to fucking work on themselves. Mm. Not mm. just their fucking business, not just their fucking purpose, but to create something for themselves where it's like a holistic man, right? Well, t- to me it's very important. Yeah. An okay life is fuck. It's so fucked up, man. No, an okay to be life, average. Yeah, an okay life is bullshit. <laughs> and look in the mirror. You know yeah. that something is lacking. You know that yeah. you're not living up to your potential. Suppose you have a relationship mm-hmm. and you know you're slacking. Yeah. You know you're not taking responsibility to make that an exceptional life. Mm-hmm. You, you just dream of somebody out there that can fulfill all your needs. But it's your own fucking fault that's not better. Yeah. And that's kind of like what happened to me, guys. So so you guys could kind of like paint the storyline of what was going on in my life. Uh, so right about, holy shit, around this time last year, what, what is this? Yes. This is July? July? Uh, it will be August. August we met. Fuck, yeah. dude. It's almost End been, August. it's, it's going to be our friend for anniversary in, in like oh, a year. Is that crazy? Let's have some body. <laughs> <laughs> let's get some rock of car. But uh, for example, uh, how we met is oh, it was so freaking crazy. I told you like multiple times that I just want to like tell everyone because fuck, it's almost it, like it sounds really fairy berry dairy, but it was almost as if by magic or like the universe created. We've been to Lion Valley, yeah. or, or maybe, or maybe, or maybe it was uh, what's it called Nico's wizardry and hypnosis powers that was uh, maybe he made this all happen. He fabricated this from his mind. But ultimately what was going on is I was in a point in my life where, you know, I was focusing on my brand, money was good. I was, uh, things that I wasn't really passionate in. I had all this excess time and I was like, and then for those that are listening, well, fuck you, Mike, for having all that excess time. I'm just trying to like figure my life out. Well, it's kind of like what Tim Ferriss talks about where when you focus on your finances for so fucking long and you look in the mirror and you realize, holy shit, my relationships are shit. Um, I haven't talked to my mom and dad in fucking months. I haven't talked to my sister in months. I haven't really had a decent conversation. Everything that I've been talking about has just been revenue, revenue, revenue. And I look deep inside my fucking soul and I realize I'm a little fucking bitch. And that was like the hardest fucking thing. I literally realized for the long time, I was like, I'm fucking escaping. Mm-hmm. I'm not uh, reaching me as a full potential as a man. Mm-hmm. And I remember, it's so freaking crazy, man, because I feel like I literally created you with the with my own mind. Like uh, one of those little like sim characters or when, when you're like changing the themes of a person or whatever, like clip art and you're put like, you're like my little Frankenstein of what I wanted to get in my life. I'm a monster. All He's right. a monster. <laughs> but one of the things that happened is I was like, I literally need someone who's like 10 years older than me, who is a savage at fighting so I could learn Muay Thai. And, and this was like the weirdest peculiar thing. He's like, oh, 
I also need somebody that is really good at salsa, at bachata, at kisamba, because I think one of the dopest things, especially when you travel and you want to find a friend group, the best thing you could do is get into fighting because you get the masculine friend group and you get into dancing and you get into like the flow, kind of like what you were talking about in uh, a previous conversation that we were having. You get both masculine and feminine energies into your life to then live your life. And I remember, and I want to know like your side of the story because I think it'd be really dope uh, to get kind of the magic that happens when two friends meet for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I was, I, I went to this uh, Muay Thai thing and I was like, okay, fuck, let's, let's do the Muay Thai thing. And then you literally came out, man. You were, I've never seen someone so damn free in their life. You know, I literally was like, I want someone who is masculine, but can also dance and teach me all this shit, almost like an older big brother to mm -hmm. kind of help me guide the way. Cause I'm just like this little fuck boy, like in my twenties. And you literally came out and you're like, hello guys, welcome to the sauce. Or no, you, you said, welcome to the Muay Thai class. And I'm like, who the fuck is this motherfucker? <laughs> but dude, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. And I don't know if I ever told you this, you were, one of the few people in my life at that point where I was extremely intimidated by because I was like, fuck, not only is this guy like really freaking awesome, you know, he can fight, but dude, and maybe it was like a little bit of jealousy mm -hmm. too. And I, I like, I just want to be authentic and transparent mm -hmm. so that we could really talk about like, there's no fucking egos in the show, man. I'm not fucking perfect. I'm trying to figure my shit out. I'm one big you. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that happened, I don't know if it was like insecurity or whatever, because in my entire life, I was always like the big fish in the pond. Mm. But then I saw you and I saw like how you would hold space, how you would fight, how everyone was like looking up to you. And then, you know, I went out to a freaking uh, salsa dancing gig and I'm like dancing. And I saw you in the corner with your uh, freaking sick ass clothing that was created by, well, now it's created by Hanalei, but before it was just like all the shit that you, it looks so freaking European, man. Like you, you look at, I, I wouldn't, I would not be able to pull it off. But, Euro trash. Uh -huh. But like, he literally <laughs> looked like the guy that would give women love for a business. Like you literally looked like a professional gigolo. And I was so <laughs> freaking, I was, I, I it, for sure it was jealousy, I think. Mm. Because we would bring friends, like for example, Momo and then Laura and all these like amazing friends that I had last year before everyone started like moving around was, they would look at you because like I was like the fucking dude. Right. And then I was like, I was with my friends and um, it was cool because I was kind of like leading the charge. And I think also um, and, and I was with a bunch of like alpha male mm -hmm. dude friends as well, like from Gavin and Ario. Yeah. And you guys have been following this as well. And it was just us three dudes and like our two female friends that we worked so hard to get because we're like, man, like. You know, we've been going out and trying to attract love all this time, but fuck, maybe we should have some female friends. And dude, you came and I've never seen their eyes just go, who is this guy? He fights and he dances. He's so in his masculine, but he also embraces the, and honors the feminine. And dude, you were like this fucking enigma for the first couple of weeks that I didn't know who you are. And I was like, holy shit, I need to, I need to find a way to uh, get to work with this guy in some fucking way. And it was crazy, just like the string of events that happened that led to this friendship that I'm like learning so fucking much from you, man. And I'm like so fucking appreciative. But like for everyone that's like listening on this, so we create like one epic trilogy when it comes to this podcast that we're creating of bringing all the people in my life out into the world so that you could help as many people out there that you helped me so mm. much. What was going on through your mind? Because before you were doing all this, you were just freaking fighting and dancing and fucking. <laughs> yeah. Well, <clears throat> I saw you entering and there's this little energy bomb. <laughs> oh it, it, it almost <laughs> has like, it has something very, you could say childlike, but it's not like a little child. No, it's yeah. more like, wow. <sighs> <laughs> I'm here, I'm loud and proud. That's how I call them in the beginning. Call me He's loud, loud and, proud. and proud. And and but then in the beginning it was a bit floaty and I say, hey it's time to train. Man, I was fucking and scared. I was like, <laughs> like <laughs> But then he did. Yeah. And then we start and then uh he walked in into the my the salsa class that I was helping to teach and with uh, Lily Santi, one of the best teachers in salsa, by the way. Mm. Uh, and he came in with uh, his friends 
And so oh, here, the little energy ball, and he was so, he, he was sparkling, you know? And then we start talking, and then apparently, and somebody else has had told me, oh, you know this guy? Finn, Finn. like, yeah, he, he came to train, and he's one of the biggest in online uh, marketing. I'm like, what? <laughs> because uh, about mm, three years ago, I, 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 I or two years ago, mm -hmm. I decided to, to I, I was a pro trainer here, and I decided it didn't fulfill me anymore. Yeah. Because I had been a professional fighter, but at the same time I was a master. I'm a master in performance psychology. First focused on on uh, on uh, on sports, and later uh, on on how to overcome burnout. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, when I was working with those high level entrepreneurs and and, and executives, I saw that the biggest stressor of all of them was their lack of intimate relationship, of the problems in their intimate relationship. And so then I, all of a sudden, all of the books that I read for myself, because, mm -hmm. well, I was not, I was a bit challenged in that, uh, yeah. you know, I could use, but then I got uh, offered a position here in Bali and who doesn't want adventure in Bali? So I mm. came to Bali, but then like, after a year, you know, it, 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 I had it with fighting, you know, I still love fighting, but the professional fight world is not for me anymore. You know, it's 22 years. It wasn't 21 years then mm. it is enough. And so I decided, okay, I want to really help people for sure. People that have worked so hard, high level entrepreneurs, high level executives that have worked so hard to be fulfilled. I want to help them reach real fulfillment, mm. but to do that, you have to take a different approach. And I believe that one of the best ways to get fulfillment is to develop a very important why and the why of most people because we are social animals is our relationships with other people and mainly our intimate relationship and that's how i go into it you know but then i had a hard time i never marketed myself before as a therapist you know people come to you because i have a problem or as a as a professional fighter uh, as a trainer people come to you because they want to get fit they want to get more confident and and so in belgium i had like this gym where I did both, I, I gave like psychophysical training where they learn how to handle intensity and stay calm into it through Muay Thai and then deep relaxation and hypnosis. So I helped them yeah, be better performers, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. So you have longevity, so you don't burn out every time because you push, 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 push and never let go. Uh, but then here, but I have a hard, had a hard time to... to to reach out people online. And then I met this guy and he transformed my life, you know? And then, and, and, and since then he introduced me to so many people that are so powerful and that are also helping me. So because of Mike, I can do what I do. So I'm forever grateful. Like if you are somebody who has so much, who has value to give that, that wants to work, make the world a better place, but you don't know how you can reach people. This man is the guy. <laughs> he has a program that is absolutely amazing. It's closed. That was absolutely amazing. <laughs> but, but what is amazing is that if you work with him privately, I would that pay all the money because pff, he will get you to a place that you have never imagined. <laughs> But it was, it was so crazy, man, because like I said, man, I, I never had like an older brother figure. Mm. You know, I never really had it. My entire life, I just kind of fucking went through my life trying to figure shit out. I was kind of like you. I was trying to read all these books at age 14, mm. like from the power of now to like even like all these sexual books. I'm like, what the fuck does this mean? Like be present. What? Who, who's this Eckhart Tala guy? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And it was it was so hard even just trying to learn from books, trying to learn from all of this shit. Why why, for example, I feel not enough. Why I feel like when I'm with my friends, I feel insecure. Why, for example, when I meet somebody that I don't know, I have to almost like prove myself on this is how cool I am. Right. And it was so freaking cool to I think you were actually one of the first males that I was allowing myself to be vulnerable with, mm. to be vulnerable, you know, very vulnerable. <laughs> I'm um, and just told you all of the fucking worries that I actually had mm. because I think one of the hardest things that I had for me is having the entire and I, I remember coming up to you mm. I was like dude I feel like the entire world is on my fucking shoulders mm. I feel like yeah, yeah. my parents I have to support them and they're expecting me to perform my sister um, I have to lead a good example not only that but I have to fucking also focus on my love life 
And I also have to make friends. I can't just be one of those lonely motherfuckers that makes money online on my freaking laptop and just looks out at a beach and not do shit with my life. Mm. And dude, there was like so many conversations that we had after you beat my ass uh, in Muay Thai. Like what, like how, how he does it, how he actually trains. And it's, I think the best phenomenal training is instead of like the theory, instead of uh, most people going through a course, instead of like, uh, oh, let me teach you how to be a man by reading my book. What Nico did for me was we put on freaking boxing gloves and we literally fought until I was so out of my head that I literally had to be on the point of survival, mm. right? And I think it's kind of like when you read a book, the only times books or videos actually make sense is when you're in a deep, deep, deep depression. Mm. Cause that, I mean, if you think about it, if your life is all good and it, it's all dandy and you read it like a book, like the power of now or the way of the superior man or anything about confidence, mm. you'll be like, I don't need this shit. Cause pain is what creates the motivation for change. Mm. But for example, for me, I was trying to work on my masculinity, but I never actually tested my body mm. as a man. Mm. I was raised to be feeble. I was asthmatic. I took a lot of allergy medication. Um, my mom was so worried when I was younger to get hurt that she didn't want me to do football because she'd be like, oh, you're gonna break your back with her super Filipino accent. And even like when I did martial arts when I was younger, I was like Taekwondo, but man, it's like American Taekwondo. So it's, it's really just you giving people a bunch of money to get a different belt every month. <laughs> it's fucking bullshit, right? Like I've never gotten fucking punched in the face. And because I've never gotten punched in the face, I like my external world was changing, but inside I still felt like the little mm. punk ass boy that was scared of the world, that was scared about getting punched in the face. And I was scared about facing my freaking demons. Mm. And I think what actually helped and why do like the shit that you do for like men and women, you, you're also helping uh, the, the swans with their fighting. And then in terms, it's also helping them out on a personal level as well. Uh, and sw the swans are like this, the seven figure family with the six figure, like uh, Hanalei swan prodigy that you've seen the freaking interview. 12, crazy. crazy man. Was you basically like, I got, I got my, uh, the, the boxing gloves on, you got your boxing gloves on. And before we even talked theory, before we talked about anything, because remember when I was coming from is I was the fucking shit in my mind. I was like, I accomplished all these things. Like nothing can go wrong. And when I have that, that means I had an ego. And if I have an ego to fucking trying to grow, then I don't have the willingness to learn. I don't have the willingness to accept change. So no matter how much content I'll fucking consume, I will not change. But what you did is you, you oh, so freaking beautiful, man. You Mr. miyagi me. You're like, okay, shut the fuck up. Stop talking. Here's some gloves. And I was like, well, dude, aren't we going to focus on, like, you're supposed to be my masculinity coach. You're supposed to teach me how to be a man. Why the fuck are you giving me gloves? You're, you're like, shut the fuck up. Take these gloves. Let's fight. And I'm like, I'm like, all right. I did fucking Muay Thai in Chiang Mai. What up? Right? And like in Chiang Mai, they'll go easy on you. Unless if you're with like one of those ties, they don't give a fuck. And they just kick you in the face. But dude, you were one of the first friends that just went all fucking out. Well, and I, I get high intensity, but I don't fully. And that's the thing. He was high intensity, but he wasn't trying to kill me. But I felt like he was trying to kill me, uh, you know? And then, when I, eyes. and then when I was like, when, when you hit me, you like you had like a freaking good like liver shot. And I was like on the oh, ground. Yeah. I, 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 I said I was sweating in the eyes, but I, I low key was crying a little bit. <laughs> That's kind of like when you got everything off and not, not, not his clothes, his clothes stayed on, uh, his gloves and his gear. And that while I'm sitting in my fucking sweat hole, just like curling up, just trying to breathe. Cause when you get punched in the stomach, man, you are out of air. Yeah. yeah. That's when you kind of gave me the lesson on so what it meant to be a man. Yeah. So what happens is like when you get the punch in your liver, your liver yeah. doesn't like it because it doesn't. No shit. It. And so <laughs> I it, didn't like it, it. it sends a bunch of enzymes in your body that pushes you down, it really squeezes you yeah. in, in, in double. Because, well, you have to survive. And it's the uh, knockout, you don't feel nothing. I mean, if you get knocked in your head, all of a sudden, what happened? Mm -hmm. But if you get punched in the liver or kicked in the liver, oh, it's nice and painful. That's why I like to hurt people in the liver. Also, because it doesn't really, when you spar, also from the street, if you have a fight, please go for the liver because they will drop slowly and then don't fall on their neck and they, you don't get sued that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
You thought it all out. I thought it all yeah. out. Or Loki, the fucker in the liver. Loki, something yeah. do. Just yeah. jump him. Or you just be like, you just kick him in the nuts, bro. Yeah. Or you take your gun and you blow your brains out. You know, yeah. Like, you just give him a blowjob. <laughs> well, you can tie that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my specialty. Yeah. Although I can teach you ladies how to do it better. <laughs> I have a gay friend who can help you there. Yeah, <laughs> is that his program? He he teaches women how to give blowjobs. No, but I, I I have to talk to him. But yeah, maybe you should do like a JV joint venture launch. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> because those guys know business. Yeah, they don't fuck around, man. They, well, they do all yeah. the time. <laughs> but they, oh, actually, they actually do, man. I have like a. Like, but the, the nice thing about like actually, sometimes I'm in, in a certain way I look up to them because why? Yeah. They are actually very masculine. You say, "Why did yeah, guys?" But you want something. You feel a desire in your body, yeah. and it goes against everything that everybody around you says that it should be. And so you say, "No, I go for it. I do it. I face the, I face all the risks. I face losing my family. And that takes balls." Mm. And also, what we can learn from them is that they normalize sex. For them, sex is a normal part of life. Mm. But for most of us, that's why, like me too, you, you can't even talk about sex in the workplace. Oh, sex in the workplace. Why? What is the problem with that? What is the problem with walking up to a woman or to a man if you reverse the situation yeah. and say, I'm very attracted to you when you have sex? What's the problem with that? And then that person is is allowed to say yes or to say no without having to be judged. I believe that that would be absolutely powerful. If we could take that from the gay culture, it's one of the most liberating things. Because when you say yes, when you as a woman are free to openly say, yes, boss, I want to, I want you to take me. Mm. Then you're also very free to say no. Research you had shown around, around uh, sexual abuse, most abuse, 90% comes by people you know. Mm. And what it has shown that the women that are the most promiscuous, they have the lowest chance of being raped. Why? Because they know what they want and what they don't want. They're verbal about what they want and so also verbal about what they don't want. And to avoid being abused, one of the best ways is to say no in the beginning. From the moment you feel this is uncomfortable, I don't like this, don't touch my leg. Mm. That moment, the guy knows, oh, it's up. Yeah, but like, for example, I, I also sympathize, sympathize with the women because there's also things in their life where maybe they might not be able to say no at that time. Absolutely. Like, for example, and especially in the workplace, right? Like, can you imagine if you're just freaking doing some Excel sheets and and um, like you're doing some freaking math and accounting and then some guy at freaking uh, like the home re or what's it called? Human Grab resources department. <laughs> yeah, just fucking Donald Trump's you. But <laughs> like, think about it. You're like in a safe space. Okay, you're not looking for anything, right? Anything in the workplace almost happens on accident or mm -hmm. after hours. And you're just like freaking working on your laptop and then say some guy in human resources. Let's 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 talk about Dave. Maybe it's fucking Dave from human resources or Bob from accounting. Go straight up to you because he took like some pickup boot camp and he was like, I gotta tell her exactly how I feel at this moment. And he was like, Hey, I want to go out on a date with you. And like think about it from like the woman's uh point of view, right? Because if she says yes, then, um, well, number one, like, like she, if she says no, then it makes the entire environment in her place, like just awkward. So, and, but, but that's, uh, that's just my point. Yeah. With gay guys, it would not in the gays community. That yeah. is not a problem at all. And that's what I mean. Like, I understand that women, yeah. you, know, I, you know, like, Women have it hard, you know, like it's, 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 it's not easy. Eh? It's so hard, man. They get ridiculed by their friends, by their family. Yeah. They have this sexual urge, but then they have to like suppress it. You know, like to me, to me, I, I call for every woman has to be a slut. Every woman. <laughs> it's very important because if you're a slut, to me, that's an honorary title. To me, that's a title that says, listen, I am a woman that they are, I am in touch with my body mm -hmm. and I know what I want, when I want, with who, or with how many. Who the fuck gives a shit? Yeah, I think slut just has like a really bad connotation, right? Because if you yeah. look at it, we're, we're conscious animals. 
there's no other animals out there. Like I have a, I have a puppy, Chinta. For those that know, Chinta is my puppy. She's freaking beautiful. Um, I adopted her from Joel Brown and she, she's just recently in heat. Mm -hmm. Okay. So her, her like freaking nipples are out. It's weird. Her like uh, little puppy <laughs> vagina, just like all, I, it was weird, dude. I didn't even know dogs could have uh, freaking <laughs> periods and shit like that. I, I just felt like a first time dad, like when your, your daughter starts kind of maturing, you're like, yeah. holy shit, this isn't a baby anymore. What the fuck? Like she gets periods. I was so freaking out of my element, but she's just like a dog. She's in heat. And you see her just actively trying to go after what she wants. Mm. She wants to uh, find a dog on the beach that gives her babies because that's kind of what she's mm. designed. Mm. And she's not caring about, oh, what if, what about like, what about this dog? What if this other dog thinks I'm like a slut or what if this, like, you know, it's so fucking natural to want to have sex because that is what is going to continue this human population. Mm. But then, for example, and back to the situation uh, in like the workplace or whatever, like women have it so freaking hard because there's so much external pressures that it just shoves their sexuality so far down to the point where in their 40s, they're like, shit, I have to get this fixed. And they take a one-way trip ticket to like, for example, Coping Young and do like tantra for like seven, eight weeks um, to figure that shit out. So it's like really fucked up what women are going through, especially in like the sexuality terms. Yeah, of but let's be honest, men too. I, yeah, I, it, it, it's I really would love for every school to have at least two hours a week real sex ed. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean learning how to put a condom on a banana. That means learning how the insides work, learning how you can edge, how you can use soft techniques, how you can how you can play with, with satisfaction, how you can relate, yeah. like a, a class about relating, how to improve your communication with other people, how you can, there is so much you can learn and it's so essential to happiness. It's so essential to having a fulfilled life, a thriving life, but we don't layer that. Like we invest in everything. It's very interesting to me to see, for sure entrepreneurs, they invest in personal growth and this and that, but when it comes to their intimate life, uh, It should take care of itself. Yeah. With the right person, it will all With magic. Out. As long as yeah. they're a Sagittarius. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just exactly. have to know their star sign and yeah. then we'll fall in love. Yeah, it, it, is, it is ridiculous. Yeah. Because to me, people say relationship is not performance. Fuck that. Relationship is the, the most difficult performance that there is. And performance is not, I have to perform, I have to prove something. No, performance means you want to do, mm. you want to act how you want to act when it's hard that's performance to me mm. for example you're a public speaker you're very afraid you breathe you do some rituals to get ready for it and you do it even if your heart rate is going through the roof mm. same thing in sex you want to be a great love you want to connect deeply but for example you have bad experiences in the past well yeah then you have to learn how to stay calm into that intense intensity or you won't get hard as a man or not lubricate as one, or it's immediately done, or you you have an inability orgasm. Like it's all similar. It's all like performance it has such a bad word, but it's it's nothing bad with it. Performance for me is not the outcome. It's not like the orgasm in sex, or it's not like a happy wife. No, performance to me is living in line with your values. What kind of entrepreneur do you want to be? What kind of a partner you want to be? And so when I work with people, that's, that's the core. What are your values? And every, because when you live in line with your values, every moment you do an action that is in line with your values, you're winning. Mm. You're winning, you're a champion. You're doing like you want to do, even and especially when it's hard. Mm. And, and that is like the main, the main, the core of everything. We are so reactive. Most of our behaviors are automated patterns that we learned earlier in life. And very often it, when we get into automatic pilot, it's very painful. We do painful things. And the problem is it's automatic pilot. So in other words, our consciousness is not aware of it. So for example, you say something to your partner and it hurts their feelings and then they're angry and you're like, well, why are you so angry? Yeah, where the fuck are you mad? Girl? Yeah. And they'll be like, why are you being a bitch? And then, and then they'll just like freak them out even more, you know? And, and what hap but what happens is like, our brain is, a, is an efficiency machine. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, when you get together in a relationship, 
you pay attention. And so you you are active. You're not mm. reactive, you're active. You're doing conscious decisions. But that takes a lot of mental headspace mm. at being attentive. When I'm talking about performance, you know, it is actually the key to performance is dual activation of your autonomous nerve system. That means that you're excited, but you're calm in excitement. You're alert. You have calm excitement. And that's very hard. It's flow, right? You're just in flow. It, it's flow. It's flow, but it's not pure flow. It's directed flow. That That's the thing. Mm. So, for example, in the bedroom, you have a certain direction you want to go. But, of course, if things happen and change, because you have to continuously connect. Now, if you don't have no direction, it might happen to be something amazing, but it might be horrible and mm-hmm. boring. Yeah, it's like the shitty sex. And you're also afraid of that as a man. You're like, fuck, well, if I fuck this up, she's going to tell all of her friends. And then, like, I will never, like, sleep with another girl ever in well, my life. <laughs> they will they will tell their friends, but yeah. that doesn't mean they will not other women will not sleep with you because yeah. it's about how you make them feel. Mm-hmm. And if you make them feel things, then there's a, a very high chance that she will go with you. Yeah, it's like so fucked up though cuz like for example, the entire education uh oh, yeah, back to kind of like what you're talking about was when they teach you how to do sex in high school or whatever. It's basically like if you do this, you get AIDS. That's basically the overall message. So, or, pr- or get pregnant. Or, or you get pregnant and die. Kind <laughs> of like that Mean Girls clip, if you've ever seen that. So it's like super fucking weird because, you're, you know, you're in this age where, number one, you start really getting attracted to the opposite sex. Mm. Uh, your parents are like, don't have fucking sex. Your teachers are like, don't have fucking sex. Mm. And then what happens is they also scare you to the point where, well, like, you also get AIDS and pregnant and die. And even though you may have some sex in like in high school and it's like, cool. It's never, of course, like the crazy freaking mind blowing stuff mm. that you have when, you know, you get out of your own head and into the flow mm. that you haven't. I mean, like, let's fix this really quick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, you saw that, bro? That was like directed flow. Uh, <laughs> the problem with it is you see like people in their 20s that are trying to find like a sexual partner and then you have men that almost look constipated and they'll never let go. And then you have like, women that are just not satisfied and say they, they find like a super attractive guy. Mm. And then like, for example, this is like some of the women that I'm, that I'll like have intimate relationships with. Uh, they'll just freaking complain about like, man, like this guy had it all, but then he was just horrible in bed. And then it's, it's just weird. Cause I feel like this doesn't fucking get talked about, you know, sex is a big ass fucking thing and no one fucking talks about it. It's taboo. It, it's very sad. It's very yeah. sad. I mean, like, I'm not a beast. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. It depends. It's very emotional with me. Mm. When 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 I have stress with a woman, I'm horrible. I, I suck in bed. It's terrible. Yeah. But when I have a good relationship with a woman, man, it's it's, it's amazing. Mm. But but like you said, we get shamed. And that but we get shamed from a very young age. People don't realize when we're infants the, the psychologist uh, even infants like when you're developmental psychologists call this the oral phase you know okay from, from and, and the oral phase and then you have the genital phase what happens is they start to explore their bodies and it feels absolutely amazing and so what happens is the young children are playing with their penises and their vaginas little boys get erections little boys before they get uh, fertile get multiple orgasms like women Really? Yes. Well, what study is this? Was this like a research thing? It, it's, it's, I think it's from the Kingsley Institute, but I don't remember. Yeah. But I, so, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of research that has shown this. Little boys and little women, girls have sexual energy. They get moist, they get hard. And people get, oh, no, it's not allowed. So that's what happens. So, what happens? You have a, your little boy and you're touching your balls, your butt. <laughs> And if you're not in a Latin American country where it's allowed, you know, you get shamed. And then you get made from like, oh, Bobby then, has a boner. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But so you get shamed and you get and you get sometimes even punished and it's yeah. not allowed. So what happens is that that your neurology learns, your body learns when you're very intimate with people, when you're in love, because you're like in love with your family when you're that age. Sex is not allowed. And then you come into a relationship and it's very passionate in the beginning. It's powerful because it's 
it you have that space that separateness you know that individuality it's not your family but then you start to live together or you get married and what very often happens is then the attraction falls away and you have no idea where because you love your partner and the more you love them the less you seem to be attracted to them Mm. And you still have desire, but for people outside of that con- connection, which is horrible, and it's very confrontive, and you think, "Don't I love them anymore?" But yes, you do, because you love them, and because in early in life, you get a program installed that says sex and very deep intimacy is not allowed. So one of the best ways to get out of this is to create some separation. And he's like moving right now. For those that are listening, he's like showing his hands. Yes. Kind of like moving out. Yeah. And because when you have some separation, some individuation. Yeah. Where you, I go out with my friends and you go out with your friends. Or I go, I go boxing and you go doing yoga or, or aesthetic dance. You know, then there is that, what they call sexual polarity. Mm-hmm. There's space to bridge, and if there's space to bridge, there's desire. But if you're so close that there's no space, there is no desire. Mm. And 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 also, well, a lot of people, what do they do? They come home and sit behind the television. And who, or, or Netflix these days, who do you, did, did you do that with? With your fa- parents, with your mother and your sister? Do mm. you want to fuck your mother and your sister? No. And so when you do the exactly the same things as in your childhood, it's mm. logical that your neurology will get less of an attraction. Mm. And so what, what is the key? What is the key to do? Is the key is to, to and sexualize, to sexualize your interactions. And that's why, and that's a good news for a lot of entrepreneurs because you have a little time. And then the time that you spend together, it's better to spend a bit less time even, mm. but make it sexualized time. So when you interact, instead of zoning out behind the television, which, which every once in a while can be nice, but instead of doing that, you take, say, four hours a week that you reserve just for you two. You put away the phones, you put away any distraction, and you go out on a date, or you go out on an adventure, you go rock climbing together. Mm. And what happens is that you're still expanding your world. Or, for example, an exercise I give a lot of my clients is become your own porn directors. So during the day, so for example, you say, okay, Sunday is our our intimate day. I don't need to have sex, but like that's like that's time that is reserved for us. We get a babysitter test for us, and during the week, you just every day or whenever you have a bit of a time, you think about what you want to try, what kind of a scene you want to try out. And then you write it down in messages to each other. And just by doing that little thing, it does two things. The first thing is it connects you to on that sexual sphere. The second thing is it helps you to keep expanding. So what what is a is, is, a, is an image of love that I really love is that love is being is expanding yourself. So when you meet somebody new, what you do, you get into contact with the other person, but in through your relationship with the other person, you get in much deeper contact with yourself. Mm. And so because she or he is another person, you start to expand. You feel you're expanding. That's but then new. once we know somebody, we think, oh, we know somebody. We stop that expansion. But that, that is just bullshit because you are changing. They are changing. That is why, for example, going on a vacation separately can do wonders also because you're expanding, you come back, get back again, and you changed. Man, that's like, I, I've already drawn so many parallels on what you said because it's all fractal, right? Like if you even look at the universe, the universe is constantly expanding. If you look at anything in life, we're always have this natural uh, propensity, big ass word, to expand. Even like, for example, why the hell are you watching this video or listening to this right now? There's something in your life that you want to expand. Mm. It could be your fitness. It could be your business. It could be your sex life. It doesn't really matter. There's something that needs to expand. But it's, especially when it comes to love, you know, it's like you need to freaking expand or else you lose attraction. Mm. And the person that you love so much, you start realizing, okay, why am I attracted to other women? Or if you're on the woman's side of things, you ask yourself, well, why does this guy no longer sexually satisfy me? 
And it's so crazy that you freaking drew those parallels because you literally described my life when I was 18 years old. Mm. You know, I was like, start off super freaking masculine. She was super feminine. And we started basically almost living together to, mm. to the point like we weren't necessarily living together, but she like in college, you have like apartments. She was basically my neighbor mm. and we would spend so much time for each other. And, and then I started like losing myself in her, you know, and mm. I started only doing business and spending time with her. I started like not hanging out with my masculine friends. Mm. And because of that, because I didn't have that energy around me, I started becoming almost more feminine. Dude, I started gaining weight. I started getting even like a little bit fatter. My motivation went mm. down. I went from a man that was like, oh yeah, let's go do this. And like being super like sexually exciting to, you know, like doing it in freaking. Like I remember like me and her, when we were in uh, college, it was so funny because mm. we were like, like my freaking dog just looking around like all the places that we could have sex. We we're like, all right, let's freaking let's break into this. Um, let's break into my teacher's office and like do it there. Right. Or let's let's do it in the back of this cab. Right. And uh, it was like we were just like these animals are like, all right, let's do it in this bus stop. Let's do this dark corner. Let's do it like mm -hmm. in the middle of classes. And it was exciting. Kind of like what you're talking about. But and it freaking sucked because I love this woman like so much that it got to a point since I wasn't conscious as a man mm -hmm. and I, I take like full blame of it is I stopped doing the thing that would initially cause the expansion. Mm -hmm. And what happened? You know, I started getting lazy. Humans are very efficient with their brains and they're like, okay, how can I optimize uh, this? Right. And then it got to the point where we were just freaking watching Netflix, kind of like we were talking about. I would buy a big ass pizza and that was <laughs> all we were doing. Like, think about it. We went from like the exciting and like the first year was amazing because it was just like going around. Like, like I remember she came dressed up as a giant freaking angel in Halloween and I was like, holy fucking shit, she's so sexy. To the point where, you know, I was just freaking like wearing sweatpants. She mm -hmm. was wearing sweatpants. Mm -hmm. uh, we stopped trying to really put our best selves forward and we were just like, man, like I was such a fucking little bitch, man. And then when we like uncoupled because I ended up dropping out of dental school, mm -hmm. I was fucking destroyed. Yeah, yeah. Cause not only did I lose my lover, my best friend, the person that I spent the most time with, but I almost, I, I lost myself. Mm, absolutely. And even like to this day, like you, you say, Oh, in your childhood, there's like this trauma that you fucking work around. There's always this period of my life, this fear, this limiting belief. Well, if I live with a woman or if I get too close or mm. too intimate, that that Mike Vasile might happen again. And I might lose all of the years that I spent fucking working on myself to become that piece of shit of a man that had no purpose, no drive, that was playing the victim game and was not aligned. So I think that's kind of where, and, and, and I'm so glad that I'm having this freaking conversation with you right now. Mm. Like my biggest limiting belief is, I don't know if I could ever like live with my lover for that fear of what if mm. I lose my masculinity, you know? Yeah. So the, there are a few things that, 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 that awakens in me now. The first thing is like, we just have to understand the body, yeah. how the body works, how the body grows, everything else grows because our entire neurology is our body. Yeah. So, you know, you look at how you look, you know how to train. So you, what you do, you push, you stress your system yeah. and then you relax because if you don't relax, if you don't rest, you don't get that, uh, the, 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 the muscles are not growing and, uh, and the neurology needs time to consolidate new neural pathways, yeah. you know, in other words, if you don't rest, you don't get stronger. So you get this away function. Yeah. And, and that's why my model is like the, the DNA of the sexually empowered entrepreneur, because and when you push in business, you have to push a while because you know entrepreneurship is the long game. It's an exponential growth. Yeah. So in the beginning, you have to do a lot. So, but if you notice from the moment that you reaching your goals, what most people do, they push again and push mm. again. And so there is no time or energy left for your intimate life. So that's what, what a lot of entrepreneurs have. Other entrepreneurs, they, for example, have a business together. And they do everything together, like I said, and then you get like this desexualized relationship yeah. where you work your business partners and best friends. But yeah, that doesn't make no spice. So it's if you get some separation. So that's intimacy too. It's, it's you get intimate, you get close, mm. you get very intimate. 
almost like one, and then you have to go down again, get to your individuality, to your separation, to your thing. And one mm. of the best ways to do is like you do morning routines. Everybody almost that I know that's a good high level entrepreneur has their morning routines. But what is very interesting that the, your most people are only focusing on two things, their health, not about first their business and their money and then if they're a bit you know for example they had burn out something they're out but their intimate relationship again not mm. so if you know these patterns yeah which is logical that's what you probably learned earlier in life or from what you saw to marriage with children for yeah. example you know that are your patterns they are there and that urge will be there to get it's like that but then you want to get focused to so install that in your morning routine. Who do you want to be? And that's why I work with values a lot. So when you work with me, I go through an entire deep value uh, exercise for an hour, two to three hours sometimes, where you really get clear about this is the kind of person I want to be. This is the kind of partner I want to be. And I focus predominantly on the intimate relationships because I know that that is the hardest to grow. Only people with big, huge, giant balls there to say, oh man, I'm a fuck up in my intimate relationships. Only people with big balls say, I am gonna reprogram myself and I'm gonna fail and fail and fail and fail until I don't fail no more. Yeah, man, I think that's why open relationships, like I have some friends that are in open relationships, that's the fucking hardest mm. thing, right? Because for example, if your business is good or in all aspects, even if it's not good, you can always mm. find ways to work on your business. And even with your fitness, there's mm. always ways that you could freaking grow um, by like lifting the weights, mm. right? But in terms of like, for example, in a relationships, it, it almost as if, like the weight or the resistance mm. kind of gets easier through time or not even easier, but less resistant to the point where, you know, we're just trying to find more efficient ways to spend time with each other. And it's, that's like the key word efficient, but like love and passion shouldn't be efficient. It should be sporadic. It should be spontaneous. It should, it should be exciting. Right. Um, mm, well, yeah, theoretically, yeah, yes, it should be exciting, but it doesn't need to be unplanned because if you're both busy people, it's not yeah. going to happen. It's going to be the last. Because you have to run, a f for sure, when you have a family. You have to do your business. You have to take care of your health. Yeah. You have to, you have also your social uh, obligations. And so sex still is the, is like the, 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 the black sheep of the family, of our life domains. But it's still. the only thing that's going to keep us surviving. <laughs> yeah, and it's also some one of the things, like you have like, uh, so, me and names it. Yeah. Getting hit in the head is not so good. Right. Yeah, you have Willem Reich. Willem Reich was a psychologist and he, after a while, became a bit crazy. But he, he said that your capability to fully orgasm is immediately correlated with your mental health and well-being. So, he says, if you are all you can be, you will have absolutely mind-blowing multiple orgasms also as a man because you learn how to accept and to stop resisting, to surrender to what your body is capable of. Now, I follow him in that way, you know, like the sex, our sex lives, it is, there is no real sexual revolution. It's a superficial sexual revolution. People talk about sex, but they don't talk sex. It's fun, it's laughing, and then it's good for sales. But, and about the book they read. Mm -hmm. But really talking sex between partners? I mean, I, I did the same thing. A certain moment I had a woman that I loved very deeply, very was very attracted to, but she was a, a, a switch, which means uh, she likes to dominate and she likes to follow both. But I'm very dominant in my sexual essence. Like I get the most satisfaction when I see a woman and I can give, 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 give. And only only very little bit I can surrender. You know, I can allow her to give to me. 
That's me. That that's I'm born with that. Everybody has his own inborn sexual essence, you know. What are those sexual essence? Would you say? Well, yeah, you have several like- types, but generally, it's like you like to. Do you like to take? Do you like to give, or do you like to receive? And it's not black or white, you know. We but we all have both, and you have several types of how that. And there are you have several types of how that comes. Some people get excited by sensual things, by being touched, by being, by smell, by their senses. Some people get more excited by an idea, by by love, by emotional connection. You know, some people get more excited just by the act of sex. And some people, they love, they love taboo. They get very excited about things that are not allowed. And then, rebels. And then you have the the people who are most creative. They love it all, but they so they need a lot of variation. So pe- people have you. It's like you have you know the love languages. Yeah. So you have the love languages where uh, everybody has a certain preference of how they are shown their love. Some people like gifts, some have to hear, some have to uh, be touched, that's me. (laughs) Some uh, have to do things together and others want people to do things for them, Mm -hmm. help them out. And you have like a primary and secondary. Well, the same thing goes in the sexual. So there's sexual languages. It's your sexual, it's like, yeah, it's your sexual style. Mm -hmm. So are you sensual? Are you emotional? Are you taboo or are you a shapeshifter? Yeah, can you get through all of them? Yeah. Be everything yeah. and like nothing. And so if you know that from yourself, you can start to find situations where you both are fulfilled. You know? Yeah. And it's just like a dance at yeah. that point, right? Yeah. Just like Beca- because for example, the taboo people they like uh the the forbidden. So that means that you there are often people that like more need more stimulation to feel alive. Mm-hmm. It's I have a hypothesis, I haven't studied it, but I, I suggest that a lot of people that have ADHD, like me, they love taboo. Why? Because ooh. I'm going to go put it in her ear. <laughs> the like that, well, can you describe taboo? Like what, what kind of taboo? Well, it can go from, for some, it depends on what the taboo is for you, how you could trace, you know? For some people, anal sex is taboo. Yeah. For other people, uh, <laughs> It goes as far as, as having like a uh, an orgy with females is taboo. For others, it might be, go even further. You know, it, taboo is really dependent of where you grew up. Yeah. And what the family, the environment. Would you think, do you think that uh, women that are more uh, meant to kind of like play an identity in like common or, or like in society... Mm actually have they're, they're actually like the kinkiest motherfuckers like in the bedroom because they have so much structure and then once in the bedroom like i have like some friends that are really into germans or japanese right and like in those societies it's filled with rules it's filled with rules and like these are the rules that i have to abide but man the moment they open up holy fucking shit they're, yeah, cr- they're like in animals man well the, the, the beautiful thing is that sexuality is one of the only places where we yeah. where we don't have to respect our social conventions. Yeah. Sexual sphere is inherently unequal. There is a power differential. It is. Otherwise it's very bland. You have somebody that dominates, somebody that follows. And doesn't need to be kinky. Which I, I like, for example. I like to spank. I like to But then there's also like in the beginning where it's like two people just kind of like you know, it's like that angry sex where like one's trying to like dominate the other, but then it's almost like uh it's almost like a game, you know? It's possible, yeah. Some people yeah. really like that, you know. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that shit. No, but yeah. th- that's very that's very individual, you know, yeah. like and, and that might change. So what happens is like if in society the, the a beautiful thing is that we go in history, you yeah. know? In the Victorian era, nothing was allowed. Sex was only for reproduction. What happened? There was the most debaucherous scene that you have. Orgies, BDSM, really filthy shit. Where, mm-hmm. where the nobility, like Marquis de Sade, really killed people even, you know, for the sexual excitement. Because what happens is, 
the sex, sex, the sexual world is a separate world. It's a world where mm, we equalize life. We do the things. It's playing. We forget it, and that we a lot of us look at sex, and for sure, men because we have to perform, we have to be amazing lovers. Yeah. We forget that it's play. We forget that it's about relaxing. It's about exploring. It's about exploring new things. It's about acting as if we are a whore or as if we are a gigolo or as if I'm a pirate, you know, if you like that. <laughs> it, like, it is about play. It's yeah. about having fun. It's about letting go of the constrictions of society. And that's why taboo, you know, is so hard. And I believe that there are much more women that are shapeshifters. Yeah. Because let's be honest, when a woman is in touch with her own body, like we men, we have to train very hard to keep up with them. Yeah, I mean, well, if you think about it, like women have uh, an organ specifically designed for pleasure, while ours, we kind of like multitask and be like, yeah. we fucking can come out of it and we could also pee out of it. Yeah. So it's well, really interesting. Yeah. It's like, well, the clitoris, I call it like, is the butterfly. <laughs> because people think it's like a little bub, that's not true. So you have like under the, 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 how you call it, the, the labia, you have the internal, yeah. uh, Clitoris, and then around the 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 the, the how is it called like the, the slit, <laughs> <laughs> the opening. There's also so there's it is a big organ. It yeah. is literally the penis. It's it's the same thing as the penis of the man. It's exactly the same. It's like a it's like an iceberg, right? Like yeah. you only see the tip. Exactly. So if then... you only imagine that you have somebody has to pleasure you and they only touch your cock head. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's so nice. So no. You like that boy. So what you can do is you can start to massage the, the inside yeah. of their. It even goes to the inside of their thighs. Mm. So if you start to massage that, then it's as if you are jerking off her entire cock, and it's going to be much faster. But what is? But that's still clitoral, and yeah. clitoral is is like you said, it's the same thing as the penis. So it's you when you come through your clitoris or your. Uh, penis it's a from through the pudendal nerve and that means you get a peak it's like tension tension and then uh, relax good night you said something interesting just right now mm. um on the peak and the, uh, and the, the yeah. that's, that's the fucking noise when of course you come right like uh, 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 uh. but uh. one of the things that i also want to bring up is i mean if you look at ancient texts or like think and grow rich or if you study uh is it the Tao or, or the Taoism? Taoism. Taoism. And tantric, yeah. yeah, where if you study these philosophies, and this is kind of like the things that I've been like playing around with for the past, I think, 12 months or so, right? Is there was this aristocratic family, like the Chinese oh, yeah, or the royalty yeah. or the people that were in the rich. And you could look at uh, studies like uh, Mantak Chia. It's like a really good uh, book or the, the, what was it? The Multi-Orgasmic Man, yeah. where essentially what they did back in the day in ancient China is they kept it only amongst the rich. And that was that they would not come. They would not release their seed. They would not ejaculate. And instead they would inject, 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 yeah. Basically what it is, is instead of coming out, you suck it up your spine and into your third eye. And then you just apparently like hallucinate, right? I've only done it like maybe three or four times and it's freaking insane. But Let's, let's talk about that, man, because what you said is like super interesting because of course, like there is that trough, there's that excitement, but most of the time, and I think this is actually what happened uh, when you're just unconsciously having sex all the time, right? It could be with a partner that you're seeing or with multiple people that you're just like releasing your freaking seed and it gets to the point where, I mean, it's like anything in life, man. Like in history, when you release your seed a lot, in your brain, you think you're already making it. Because at the end of the day, the, our only biggest motivation, and this is why a lot of chronic masturbators don't really succeed until later on in life because they're technically evolutionarily satisfied. They're like, oh, I just came as much as possible. That mm -hmm. basically means like my seed is good. Like I'm good, I survived, I replicated, I don't have to do fucking shit. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized that when I'm like just releasing my fucking seed all the time, and I'm saying seed because it's such a lot less uh, like upfront face instead of just me saying, yeah, I'm fucking coming all the time. Uh, is I, I find my motivation going down. 
I find that it doesn't matter how much freaking times you set for me on, like, for example, if you were going to coach me, you're like, okay, make sure you make sweet love with your partner every single week at this time. And it has to be crazy. It doesn't really freaking matter for me. Cause if I'm just like releasing that shit all over the place, right. Just like a fucking, <laughs> like a fucking machine gun. Uh, I will just not have any motivation. Right. And I think that's like the biggest fucking problem because it's like when men just continually ejaculate and fucking come, not only does their business life suck, not only does their fitness life suck, you'll start getting like even fucking fatter, man. If you, if you uh, like do that way too many times, that's, I think the biggest thing, dude, that's why I like gave up masturbation. That's why even like in intercourse or sex that I won't even like come, I'm more focusing on the ejaculation, but it's almost like harder now to actually have that orgasm when you're trying to separate it. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, so it's like uh, when you come to the pudendal nerve through your- What is pe- that? What is that for someone so it's, that's, it's, it's a nerve that shit. It's a nerve that is, is connected with your penis and with your clitoris. Yeah. And so it's a certain kind of orgasm that you get. It's like the release of the tension. But the, what happens is like when you're having sex, your dopamine goes up, so it feels really good. It's smart to be. You're like, oh man, this feels so fucking warm. But then when you finally ejaculate or when yeah. you come to your clitoris, what happens is, you get a dopamine rush, serotonin and drops. So what happens with serotonin? Serotonin is a hormone that makes you feel calm and good, but it also gives you a signal that you're alpha. Mm. So when, and what it gives you the body, it gives you the body the sign of go and fuck other women. Yeah. So when you don't do that, you don't have that dopamine drop because not after that peak, you get a drop. It's like every drug. So you have a drop, you have a hangover. And you're going to feel not so great. Mm. So that's why a lot of people here in Bali practice semen retention. They try to keep their, say, ejaculate once a month or or not. If you, I haven't ejaculated for since, I think, January. Mm. And that's why I'm like, like fucking on edge all the time, dude. I just want to. Yeah, it's it's, it's apparently good. But so what, what also happens is like, but then women, they can also come through their vagina. But if you're used to a clitoral orgasm, it is very hard. Yeah. Why? Clitoral orgasm means tension, 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 and release. Mm -hmm. It's like an over tension and then your body releases that tension. Now, when you want to come through your vagina, you have to relax. When you want to injaculate, I found like Mantak Chia's time is a lot of the tension, it's really pushing it up. I actually like the opposite way. Yeah, is this for men or for women? For both. So, both men and women, I found is the best way to do to achieve multiple orgasms yeah. is to learn how to relax, not tense. Really? So I use also like kegels where you have to tense yeah. and relax your pelvic floor to become stronger. But I don't use it to become stronger. I use it as a way to learn how to relax. That's so d- different. Like so, for example, the way Mantak Chia like has it set up and for those that don't know who he is just like fucking google him he's like this asian dude that just apparently knows the ways of the the ancient Tao, where you just like you see him retention it's it's like when i say like uh i didn't ejaculate since january it wasn't that i didn't have sex because i did plenty of times and <laughs> just like putting it out there um but it's even when you're having sex when you're at the brink of coming instead of ejaculating it out and releasing your life force energy, which is essentially what it is. That's like the shit that you use to create a fucking baby. You basically suck it up your spine and into your brain. And I know it sounds really fucked up. I remember reading Think and Grow Rich at 18. I was like, what the fuck? I shove it up where? Into what? And like the benefits are freaking insane, man. Number one, clarity, creativity. When that happens, I'm always just wanting to conquer something and not only that but you could also have like an orgasm without actually ejaculating and it's so weird that you say it's relaxing because like how he has it basically set up it's freaking weird especially if like your lover isn't aware of what you're trying to do that's why you have to kind of like tell them up front essentially what you do is you get to the brink of coming or releasing your seed and then at that point you basically do that move when you're trying to stop your pee mid-flow and like really hard, you have to like look at your third eye. You have to put your tongue on the roof of your mouth and it looks really freaking weird, right? It sounds like an awesome thing, but in essence, it actually looks really weird when it happens. 
And then you have to just like visualize it going up your spine. And most of the time you actually fuck it up. It just like goes all over the place. So that's what I mean. So I've found, I did that too. And I tried a long time and it was very hard for me to get my energy up. Like it almost yeah. never happened. But when it did happen, I, I, I read Michaela Boom's book. You know Michaela Boom? Yeah, you recommended yeah. Uh, one of her podcasts, yeah. I think. So Michaela Boom is like the, 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 is the woman who toured 10 years with uh, David Data, the, the, mm-hmm. the author of The man, the Way of the Superior Man. Yeah. And she has a very soft way. It's like like, like the Thai way. That mm. way is like a masculine way, forcing it. Visualizing you push it. Visualizing the semen and going. It has to go. <laughs> but the the, the Michaela and her her way of tantric sexuality because tantra yeah. is much wider. Sexuality is only a little part. These days we speak about tantra and it's about sex. No, sex is only a little part. But that's that's for another yeah. moment. But so what happens is she learns how to relax and she she's actually one of the the main proponents of unstructured movement, ecstatic dance. You dance how your body feels. It doesn't matter how it looks, you express it. And she says you have to reconnect with your body and consciously try to relax it more and more and more. And when you go to the more Dao, when you really go into Qigong, that you, for example, you have to stand like that for an hour. It is not about tensing, it's about relaxing too. But but Mantex don't, don't, doesn't talk about that because he wants to get people to his uh, to his uh, to his center in Thailand, you know. Mm. So it when you learn how to relax, what happens is when you relax your body, you will feel much more. That's one thing. Then when you relax, the energy has much more opportunity to go. So for men, if men learn how to relax deeply, their anus because we keep our tension mostly in our ass. That's why we see we're anal. And we're just afraid if something might come up it, you know? So you're, just so, like you're flexing that shit all the time. So you flex your anus, you flex your, your buttocks, your lower abdominals, yeah. your uh, psoas. Our hips are so tight with most men, so tight. Because we get shamed from a very young age. You know? So it is that. So when you, as a man, you learn how to relax that and also your, your pelvic floor, you will feel much more. So you relax your pelvic floor yes. instead of oh yes, flexing but you it. but you can learn it. You learn to relax it through flexing it. So what I do, I do also do kegels. But so it's like I, reverse kegels. It's like I flex, I flex, I flex really too, and then I breathe out, and then I relax because I do yeah. it always in the same time. You breathe in, hold my breath, hold it, breathe out, and relax. Mm. So when you do that regularly, you teach your body that when you breathe out consciously. You relax. Mm. So then it's much easier than... Then you just do... Mm. And in that moment, your body relaxes and the energy will go by itself, unforced. Mm. And... But to do... So that's that for men. But for women, what happens is if you want to have a vaginal orgasm, that's like you, they can come to the gastronomical nerve, to the pedendal nerve. Men too, but men can only come to the pedendal nerve to the ass, <laughs> and and they can come to the vagus nervous, the biggest nerve in your body. Mm. Men can't do that. So, but to do that, you have to be really relaxed. You have to relax your entire vaginal wall and your womb because women can have a womb orgasm, which you have the G spot orgasm where they ejaculate. But then you can have the womb organ, which is even more powerful. But to do that, you have to relax. So it's the opposite of what many women are used to with the clitoral orgasm. So when you learn how to relax, or when you learn how to relax your woman's vagina, it takes, of course, much more time. You need to be very patient. And she needs to be able to trust you because it's a complete surrender to her own body, to her own pleasure, and to... And why? Because if a woman fully orgasms completely with you, you will have a connection that is unbreakable. And so a lot of women have a subconscious break to do that. Because if she doesn't trust you, the chance is very low that she will do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like the biggest thing because most women... um like, I'll, like we'll have like a lot of friends here mm. before they move to Bali and they just like have sexual partners uh, in other parts of the world, like people that aren't actually actively working on their intimacy as if it mm. was a sport, as if mm. it was like uh, your fitness, as if it was like your business. And many of them are just like surprised when they have 
like these orgasms out mm. here because they're like, fuck, you know, I, I've never actually let mm. go. And you can also see, like, I remember when I had this different mindset when I was younger and I was so unaware of like the feminine anatomy that I didn't understand and you're just trying to like force it. And then of course, like in her brain, she's also trying to force it and both parties are tensed instead of both like relaxing. Yes. And that's why you have like a lot of these um, really sexually frustrated women coming to Asia to find ways to not be sexually frustrated anymore. Well, yeah, and it's also, and then 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 that's why I'm not a big great fan of porn. Yeah, porn is a, horrible. Stop watching no, that no, shit. No, Stop no, masturbating. No, 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 porn can have its place, but the problem is with generally porn is just jackhammering away. And so men, get that's the sexual education that most men have porn so they think that's what needs but it's also like the weirdest fucking shit like there's like some fucking weird ass porn where they're just like shoving shovels and shit in place and yeah and but it's just like giving you this weird reality on what actually sex yeah. is it yeah, goes but, from but you know, some people are just attacked by that you know no i yeah. like i don't just not judge nothing to me everything goes when it's with both people that 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 uh if both pe people say that's okay it's okay if it's with consent. Yeah, I but like, everything. for example, the porn industry, it's just all them trying to push the envelope on, yes. it's yeah. also like a big so, money industry. Yeah, you know? it's, it's pure money. And and the problem is that then, like, but the problem is when, when somebody's jackhammering in you, of course you're gonna tense your pussy because it's not, not soft. So one of the best ways to start to do semen retention or to have much more connected sex, to have a woman have full blown orgasms is to when you finally when you she's completely warmed up after you yeah really after you do your, your freaking jumping jack yeah. sexual jumping jacks exactly and exactly <laughs> but then 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 you enter and you don't move for 10 15 minutes but you just kiss and you just relax and you just move just enough so you can stay hard so it has two effects the first effect is that you will feel the pussy collapse on you because when the so you have to ask a woman to feel what it is if you enter your fingers <laughs> here we go yes. sex ed with nico but, but like, welcome so class has started ask her to do uh, a kegel what will happen is this will get closer mm -hmm. but the vagina itself will balloon that's what happens so when she relaxes the walls will collapse on you and when you relax when your muscles are relaxed you feel much more i mean i'm gonna give the example if you have a belly that is uh, that is loose and I'm hitting it, or you, your belly is fixed and I hit it, hit it. It's a big difference. Same thing inside. So the added advantage is then she will start to feel much, much more. And at the other side too, same thing mm. for the man. When you do that, you and you consciously start to relax that entire area, yeah. you will become much more sensitive. So a very tiny movement can be absolutely amazing because you're consciously aware of it. Mm. And then you can last much longer because you're much more in in um, in touch with what yeah. is going on in your body. And so it's like you really, it's like you, instead of like classical porn like sex, it's like bang, 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 or even if you can last long, it's just, yeah. Of it's just like you're just like, you're just like freaking punching wall like did she come yet no that that's a bit like you you have like a uh uh eating a burger contest and most people want more two burgers and they're dead you know but like some people are trained to eat burgers to keep eating burgers but it's still unsatisfying. No. It's okay every once in a while burger but yeah if you're gonna eat that every day but then you have the fine dining Mm. It costs you six hundred dollars or seven hundred dollars for one meal. Like fuck. So you gotta make sure you enjoy it to the fullest. So you come in there, you make sure you look good, you make yourself ready, you go together, you look each other in the eyes, and you see how beautiful the, the yeah. space is. You connect, you talk, you touch each other's fingers or each other's feet, and you're talking, mm. and you're they put the first plate and it is like a masterpiece you see it you smell it you can almost taste it just you want to eat the entire so thing good. so fast but you literally take the yes. first five minutes exactly. to just appreciate the food like damn exactly. this is dope ass food and they have meal and they have course after yeah. course of course you have 10 different courses <laughs> with very subtle differences with so much fragrance and this is before dessert and th and that's before dessert and that you will remember for a very long time.
because you're completely aware you completely from from the moment you have that first piece in your mouth it is as if you have tiny little orgasms all over your body because you're completely aware of what is happening in your body mm. and and you're so in contact with your senses and with the person that you're looking in their beautiful eyes thank you <laughs> but it's like so weird because like for example uh back when i lived in the states it was almost like my idea of sex was a race against time to get her to orgasm that was like basically it i thought i almost had like a time limit or something where it's like okay once it's about to get on it's a little bit like full force mm. dominant like especially if like you watch porn like because i used to watch a lot of that when i was like younger now i just cut that shit out like completely mm. like i won't even like look at it because you don't see that intimacy side mm. in the interaction. You know, some guy just basically knocks on the freaking door and he's like, hey, I have your package, psych. And then bam, they're like naked and it already starts. Um, but after like studying some Tantra and Kundalini, and for those that are listening, like, man, get the fuck, start studying that shit. Like, especially men, man, like that shit has been the biggest game changer in like my intimacy life is just learning that because all that shit is the opposite of porn, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of like someone knocking on your door and then within like 10 seconds, it's just like you punching a punching bag. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It's so much slower, yeah, but right? It the buildup is so much the, the more insane. Up, but it doesn't need to be, stay slow. So for well, sure. yeah, of course you could have like your quickies where you're like, all right, get no, on. No, 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 but what I mean is like, like suppose like, uh, when I was really in tune with my lady, I mean, I had moments and that was horrible. That's why yeah. I, I- Well, we I, all I, do. I, I mean, no one's like fucking, that's why but you're so, good at coaching because you've seen the yeah. shit. <laughs> and so when you're completely in, in so when I, I did that like 50 minutes of not moving, of just connecting, and then what happens is your entire pelvic region yeah. is relaxed. And so you feel more, but also it is used to it. It's like it's acclimatized. So when you get in and you really immediately start to pound, you're not acclimatized. And so it's like a stressor. Yeah, it's you're like, like what the fuck is this the shit? What's inside? Your penis is like, what is going on? <laughs> you're like, and yo, I was just I'm chilling. Like, I want to get out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just fucking spit on, just, on my mic? <laughs> is it? You just fucking came on my mic. <laughs> but then when you when you enter, it's like, oh, what is this? You go, you go in very yeah. slowly. And then, then it's like, what is this? It's yeah. like Disney songs playing in the background. Mm -hmm. A whole like new it. world, a dazzling place I never knew. <laughs> I don't know the text I would sing, but uh, then you guys would say no. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, you can relax. And, yeah. and then, but then after that, after a while, after like an half hour or an hour sometimes, you can go pretty intense because then once a woman is really relaxed and her womb is relaxed, the yeah. womb will be. Uh, there's a certain point on her womb that's uh, on her uterus, not her womb. You don't know her womb. But so, so your yeah. uterus, where she wants to get banged. When it gets activated, she wants to get banged. She wants it. She wants to get banged hard. <laughs> Bang hard. Yeah, and you can't go hard enough. Yeah. So because that shit is strong, man. Yeah, but then. But it's like you have to warm it up. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's so like when it's out. cold outside yeah. and you want to start your but car like not, five minutes. It's not necessarily banged from in and out. It's better to bang then you stay in and then you do boom. It's like you, it's like a wave. Yeah. It's not like bam, 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 bam. No, it's like. Yeah, no, it, it's so crazy. I think uh, one of the things that I've figured out, it's uh, this like acronym. It's D-E-V-I. It's oh, yeah. D for dominance, E for emotional connection, V for variety. And I is for, what is it? Immersion. That's what it is. Um, so for those that are listening that you want to have a good love life, make sure you write this shit down because this shit will change your love life. It, it, it did for mine. D is dominance. And this is for men. This is for men. Like women, it, it's of course different. I studied- Like say 10% of the women- Yeah, well there's also 10% that, that associate with like masculine. And then, I mean, like there's there's this one party that I went to that you actually invited me to because Nico's into some weird shit. There was like this uh, girl that was dressed up and had like this dude on a leash. Uh, so for that part, like the man is in his feminine and the, the woman is in, yeah, yeah. but, but that's is, like BDSM yeah, shit. That's yeah, like but, on like, but what is very, very interesting about that is yeah. that most submissive men are very high power people. 
They are yeah, that's they a crazy are thing. the owners of Fortune 500 companies. They they run countries. What is that? Like I said before, yeah. your sex life. You like hit it, bro. You got your, your sex life is a way to uh, to equalize your life. So they have so much responsibility. They have to direct everything. They have to take responsibility. They take such much risks. They're responsible for the lives of hundreds, perhaps millions of people. And they just want to let go. And they want to let go. And so if they come with the, the mistress or her partner and she takes responsibility for his satisfaction, for he can let go. Mm-hmm. And then he he can even enjoy being humiliated and, and that because that's a bit of a counterbalance that can make him sane because if he doesn't do that, there's a very high chance that he will become very mean. He thinks that he's a god. So that balances a bit out. Mm. Same thing, very powerful women, like what many men don't see. And that's but it's why like with most women, though, because yeah. most women are like, they Such have to be structured. They have yes. to, you know, many of them are becoming breadwinners yes. of their family. Many of them are becoming independent. Many of them are not even like settling down or getting married until they're in their late 30s or 40s. And they have all this fucking structure. Mm. And then when it comes time to the sexual act, they just want to let go. Yeah, so so one of the things that well, the, the women that I work yeah. with, they're like A-type women, yeah. absolute amazing women. But the, they have very often a very hard, big heart and a very feminine essence sexually. Mm-hmm. But they never be able to ex, uh, experience it because most of the men that they're attracted to are almost like afraid <laughs> of them, right? No, well, they're I, like not even afraid, but intimidated. They're like, no, shit, this girl no, has like her shit I don't together. Agree. So the the thing is, there are. But the problem is that they have this front, yeah, this masculine front, because I can take care of myself. Because they had, they had no choice. Yeah, earlier survival. In life. But so, what happens then? If you're a caring but strong man, and you meet such a lady, you will not be attractive because. A, a, ma- a person, man or women, with a like say masculine, a go, yeah, a, a directive essence, wants to be a hero. We want to do something and want to make our woman radiate even more. It's like the romantic times of just like looking at any story. You right? want to be, you want to be a hero. And women very often want a bad boy to change for them. Yeah, that is like the biggest story. It's like they always want a bad boy and they always want uh, what's called a hero. And and she wins. Yeah. But but like it's like the crazy thing. That's why it's like uh, what we're we're talking about before the DEVI. So I could just like Mm. get that point out and then we could go more into it. Um, If you add these things in any aspect of your life, and I guess like both parties can do it as well, is there needs to be a time where you are expressing, you know, the dominance. Yes. You know, because for example, there's a lot of women in, in my case, right, where their life is filled with so many freaking rules mm. and sometimes they just want to let go. Mm. And the only time they could actually let go is if they trust you enough as a man for you to be in the dominant position and for that to actually happen. That's like why women like freaking go crazy. It's like if they have all those rules and they're like, oh man, I trust this guy to actually go dominant with me, then it's just like done. And then the E is emotional. Uh, It's having that emotional pull. Because the thing about the difference between like women feeling used to women feeling like actually accepted and seen is that emotional intensity of actually seeing them, of not being dominant because it's for your ego, but doing it because it actually satisfies and serves her. You know, it opens and blossoms her up to be in a presence of the masculine. She can now actually surrender into her feminine Mm -hmm. nature. And that only happens if you have that emotional connection. You know, that's why most of like the women that I sleep with, I won't unless there's some type of emotional connection where I think she's like super amazing. She's doing cool things with her life. Um, she has such an amazing soul. She has such an amazing personality that we already connect on that level. And then V is variety because if you do the same shit every single fucking day, like, oh, let's like, like, for example, some parents or like some people that get married, they're like, all right, Herb, yeah, let's like, or like Sally or whatever, Julie or whatever, like Bertha. Yeah, we'll have sex every single Tuesday for 15 minutes and it just becomes like a chore or something that, you know, is expected. And the moment it's expected, it no longer has that excitement of like, oh, fuck, like when, when is this shit going to happen? Like kind of like when, uh, the beginning part of my relationship in college, we were just like little bunnies just looking out like on a scavenger hunt for new places to have sex in. And then the last one is immersion where it goes back to what you were talking mm-hmm. about, where 
can you actually, for example, be inside her and not just do anything, just like look at her, mm. eye gazing, um, holding each other after instead of mm. just like going to bed. Like, m like what happened with most guys is they'll fucking just ejaculate and then the woman still wants to be loved. The woman wants to be seen. But then what, what's the guy doing? And there's no immersion, right? Yeah. So, so the, I have two things to say. The dominance to me, you, you put it very nicely, is uh, it's actually just taking responsibility to create a situation that is satisfying for both. Mm. That is dominance to me. It's giving. Yeah. Actually, very often I, I see that the submissive is the leader. Mm. So I see that in men women relationships too. Men want to give, men want to make their woman happy, men want to give the woman what they want. But most men that are a bit strong don't want to be told what to do. So instead of telling you man what to do, one of the best ways to use the, the art of inception, put ideas in his mind. So he has a great idea to yeah. make you happy. And then I am that I know and I know when women do it. I know perfectly well how they are challenging me. Or they tell me, Oh, you can never do that. What? So you, a lot of women have lo our grandmothers who are masters in that. So there was a research in Portugal in the 40s when it was still very machismo, still very machismo. Yeah. The men were the bosses. Women had nothing to say. But then um, uh, uh, I think it was Margaret Mead or another very, very big uh, uh, anthropologist. She researched that the men were working the entire day on the fields or on the sea and the women were talking on the marketplace all day and they decided everything. But the men thought they have great ideas. It was just one putting ideas in the men's web because it's logical. Women have a much more parallel way of thinking so can take into account much more factors. Well, even like what you just said right then and there, kind of like in the olden days of being the hero or uh, whatever. Like, let, let's mm. talk about that uh, mm. paradigm of man wanting to be a hero. Yeah. Like, if you really think about anything in our life, and this is why the inception thing that you said was like so freaking key, is because, of course, when when you were saying submissive, I want to be really clarifying for all the people like l listening to this. It, it isn't fucking asking like, oh, does that feel good? Oh, do you like that? Oh, am I able to do that? It's not by like asking permission. It's almost like getting inspired by the cues that your woman is giving you because mm. if the woman told you exactly what you want or what they want, then you know it, it takes away from the fantasy of their mind, right? Well, well, hmm. that, that, when you're looking to BDSM, actually, there's a lot of conversations. So very well, this BDS, BDSM. I'm talking about like for for example, normal man. Normal mm. woman that that's not into that, even though everyone has like some propensity yeah, but, but to, to get to, into to, that. To me, it's a bit like. Uh, no, no, communication can yeah. be very, not in the moment itself, but like. But it's like asking permission, like for example. It's not, it's not asking permission. So in the moment. Like to it, not, act, like and th this is what I'm talking about. Like, uh, cause, cause I almost do this survey, right? Mm -hmm. Like kind of like when you do a survey with uh, your clients, you're like, well, what is your biggest challenge? Mm -hmm. Like all the times that I'll be with someone cause mm -hmm. you're traveling and everyone is like in and out. And you know, you really have these amazing connections for a couple months while, you mm -hmm. know, that they're here or they're traveling is I'll ask them, I was like, okay, so what is like your biggest challenge? And they're like, mm. oh, most of the times the previous men that I was with, they were either number one, too needy or number two, when it came to the bedroom, they were just almost like asking per, mm. for permission mm. on oh, yeah, things yeah. like, like, oh, does that feel good? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. almost like a asking for feedback. It, it goes yeah, back yeah. to the neediest. Like, insecurity. Like, like insecurity, right? Like, oh, what are, can we do doggy style now? And the girl's like, what the fuck? Just like, yo. Yeah, there, there is like this book, I think it's like just just fuck me or something. It's, <laughs> it's, it's about, about, but the, the, yeah. the, the thing is, like you can talk about it, but not while you're doing the act. That's horrible. Yeah. Oh, that, that's what I'm talking about. The communication yeah, is no. out of the bedroom, but yeah, in the bedroom, exactly. it's you're, it's primal. Like yeah. you forget language. Yeah. You're like an inaudible no, you, creature. You have language, but you have non-verbal language. Yeah. Or you you say a little slut, suck my cock. And then you tell her you love her within no, no. like you're, a second. No, and you're my, yeah. that's the key. You're mine, little slut, in that moment. 
Yeah, but you can, of course, say that like in the workplace or whatever, right? It's it's just like no, 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 no. But yeah. like in the bedroom, like uh, or whatever. Well, in the bedroom, like there's to, no rules. Exactly. There's rules, but there's no rules. It's like it's like you can yeah. The rules are break the rules, and and the rules are the only rule is yeah. that both people are consenting. Yeah, that's like the biggest thing you learn in the tantric communities. It's like like you do something and like, do I have consent? And they're like, yes. And then you go more into that. Yeah, I, I would not like. Very often, if you really pay attention, you don't need to ask for consent. Yeah. But a lot of men do because they have no fucking clue about empathy, about paying attention to nonverbal cues. Well, that's because like most men are, and I'm just saying this because this is how we were raised. We're emotionally retarded. Well, we, we get like I said, we get taught to be strong and independent, yeah. and that means we have to suppress other thing. So, to um, so what happens? So I was talking about intimacy later. So we yeah. had first the dependency. Then you have the independency. In the independency, where men are more fem- a bit stuck, it's like a pendulum swing. Yeah. In the past, a man had to be strong, and then they become hippies, and uh, I'm in touch with my feelings, smoke some joints, yeah. in nature surfing. Coping gang. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and women then, I will become strong and independent. Yeah. And like I said, there's no desire then. But then, it's because, it was, but it's a necessary step. Yeah. Because in the past, women were not allowed to, to, to be independent, to create, to have some direction. And we men were not allowed to be emotional or intimate. So that's a normal thing. It's like a pendulum swing. You're forced in this, the pendulum really relaxes and goes to the other side and gets yeah. stuck too. And now, if you want to have a passionate relationship where you keep that fantastic desire or can have moments of fantastic desire because, like I said, it's like a wave function, you have to go to the middle. And the middle is you learn how to hold your emotions as a man. If you learn how to hold your emotions, feel them, express them in a way that you want to do, yeah. that is the key. That is the man women dream of. It's the man that is able to communicate and it can be by writing. It can, if it's so difficult for you to stay in control by talking, write it down. You know, it helps very often. It, it's communicating what goes out in within you without being controlled by your emotions and without slipping back into your uh, automatic patterns where it is as if you're driving the car, something happens, you get triggered, your mind switches off and before you know it, you have a big crash and you have no idea how that happened. So that's mm-hmm. why it happens. And then your partner's like, why, why, why did you say that? You said this and this. I did not say that. And if they would have a camera, you would have said it. Because, because it was automated, because we were in survival mode, you got triggered, your anxiety got triggered. You react automatically. Because that's how the body works. So, so if you have to make a conscious decision, when there's a tiger, we're dead. Mm. So when there's a tiger, our, our subconscious mind takes over because we have to react immediately and we are not aware of what happens. And only afterwards we can piece back together what happened. Mm. That's the survival mode. Now what happens in intimate relationships and why so it's so hard to really change your behaviors is because when you get triggered, for example, when somebody comes too close and you need your personal space or the other way around, when you need a lot of closeness and they need more personal space, you get triggered and you automatize. And then, for example, if you're somebody that needs more personal space, you're going to push them away by being hurtful. Or when you need more closeness, you go crazy because you're a cold ass motherfucker and you you don't give me nothing, you don't love me, and big drama. Mm. Thousand messages. You didn't fucking put down the toilet seat, what the fuck? Yeah, thousand messages. And then the day after, the day after you realize, like, wow. Or you even don't realize it, you ignore it. Because it's very hard to see how you have behaved. That the way you look at yourself is not who you are. Mm. That the way you look at yourself is not how you are behaving. And so that's why it's so important for people to work together with specialists. Or at least to have a partner where that can communicate to you in a way that doesn't make you defensive. So the problem is that we are very violent in our communication. We want something and we try to do it by force. So if you do something, 
you get reward by our attention or love. And if you don't something, we get will shame you mm. or make you feel guilty. That's how we get raised from very young. We get punished and, and, and the rewards itself. But it, it even if you get what you want, it's unfulfilling. Because you feel that they did it. So there are two questions that I always ask. What do you want? And why do you want the other person to do it? What is the reason mm. that you want to do it? Yeah, it's so weird the way that you said it because it's kind of like, it's like you want something, but then the moment you get it, you don't want it anymore. It's kind of like how every single woman wants the bad boy to change, wants the hero to get away from his mission and his vision to like spend time with her. But it's the moment the bad boy turns into a good boy or the moment the hero leaves his purpose and just spends all of her time with her. She's just like, well, what the fuck? You know? So, so the problem, the problem is, is the following. We have a misconception. No, women don't want a bad boy. We want a strong man. Because a bad boy is still a boy. It's compensation. I was a bad boy for the longest time. I can, I can know. And yes, it's very addictive because you get, you get, they get a lot of stress and trauma and pain. And so then the moments that it gets good, I, I give attention. Then it's so nice. Then it's a full dopamine. It's like addictive. Mm. It's you have like the roller coaster, and women love to feel emotions, to feel alive. But it's destructive. So what very often happens is that women, so the dominant women, like the alpha, a type women, we we're talking about later. So they attract two types of guys. So they don't attract caring strong men because the strong man say, "I have no place in her life. She will not allow me to give to her. So I will not feel like a man. I want to have." Uh, significance in her life so they fall away so who, who are left you have then the, the weak boys that need the mama and so then she sees potential in him so he, she gives him the, the steps she can, he can take to become a man but then the problem is when he is a man he will leave her ass because uh, if a boy becomes a man he will always leave his mother it's a mm. it's a wrong situation it's like some freudian shit yes and also that's that and the other side is also that in that way she's dominant above him so she doesn't look up to him so that gives a second and very often like you said then they ask for permission sexually and so she doesn't feel taken she doesn't feel she felt like swept she, off her feet yes. you know she she feels like this this guy just gives to get so that's why the nice guy is not so nice at all. And very often the nice guy will get yeah. Yeah, will get back to do the, the women in very sneaky, passive aggressive way. Well the, the nice guy is the, probably the most fucking manipulative shit in the fucking world, man. Yes. Like like for example, when I studied a lot of uh, dating concepts when mm -hmm. I was uh, 21 and I lived in Vegas for 30 days, um, like I would go out sober every single day and I would see the fucking shit the guys would do to mm -hmm. just try to fucking get laid, man. And it's so fucking like, like they think, oh, if you focus on intimacy, if you focus on starting things to, you know, get better with women, then that's like fucking manipulative or whatever, or some shit like that. But you know, it's really fucking manipulative when you see someone that you like and you're so fucking inauthentic that you go up to her and you maybe try memorizing some fucking lines or maybe you might fucking uh, try to buy her some drinks and say like, oh, maybe if like, I buy her some drinks, now she has to like sleep with me and some shit like that. And you're saying a bunch of jokes that you don't necessarily want. You're taking her out on dates and spending hundreds of fucking of dollars to really just try to impress her instead of just kind of like what you were saying earlier on to just be the man that you were meant to be, be the man that you know you are and attract a woman based off of the fact that this is your authentic self. Mm -hmm. This is you with your razor blades forward. This is you, not as the perfect man, not the man that has everything in place, but this is my flaws. I fucking own my flaws. My flaws make me who the fuck I am. And you know, it's either you're my partner or like I won't be that needy fucking bitch, you know? Yeah, so I, I, think, I think a lot of, a lot of people have tried to come across as perfect. The problem is yeah. with perfect, you cannot connect. You well, can it's even like, for example, coaching, right? Like how many times, like for example, when I was, uh, when I got started in coaching when I was 19 years old, mm -hmm. I was uh, in a direct sales company and I was like uh, helping people that were older than me uh, succeed with sales and marketing. And because I didn't want to be seen as just like a little boy, because I didn't want to see be seen as uh, an unprofessional, I would fucking have the, this coaching voice where I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going? Yeah, so let me help you with your sales and marketing. I never showed weakness. I was mm -hmm. never vulnerable. I was never fucking authentic. And what happened 
was even though like people respected me on the outside, on the inside, that wasn't who I was. And no matter how much success you may be having right now, your external world will immediately go back to what is going on in your internal world. And what was going on in my internal world? I was, like I said, insecure. I was scared. Yeah. I was putting this fucking mask on. And it's like in relationships, it's like in business. The more unauthentic you are with yourself, with the world, and with the people you care about, the more life is just going to punch you in the fucking face in the form of a Belgian dude um, that uh, like teaches Muay Thai and salsa dancing classes, you know? And love. <laughs> love. <laughs> no, but like, yeah, that's true. So, so when working with, with those eight type women and, 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 and very successful men that can't get a, a, a satisfying relationship, yeah. it's both the same. It's learning to be real. Be fucking real. Yeah, be real. Like you're not perfect. That's good mm. because we, if you're perfect, you're a machine or a psychopath. So that's the second thing. So you had those women, you know, that attacked the adult boys, but the only other men that they are attracted to or that are attracted to them are psychopaths and narcissists because they don't give a shit about their, their exterior wall. They just think, yeah, she's mine. She's my, she's my puppet. And then the women, and it's very sad because then those women, with their big hearts, with, with their front that got hurt, finally, oh, finally, a man that doesn't take my shit, a man that can stand strong, a man that I can relax in. And so they surrender. A <laughs> and they surrender to a sociopath. Yeah. So he hurts them deeply. Amazing sex because he just takes her, but it, he hurts her deeply. And then, after a while, when she can't take it no more, then she her past becomes even bigger. But the problem is, you know, and very often it comes because of they have been abused in, in childhood too, you know. And so they have a big, big panzer. And so then... A panzer? What? Panzer. Uh, like uh, an, armor, an armor. Oh, okay. Like a yeah. fucking wall. Yeah, a wall. Yeah. And, but then, so what happens then? Again, so then they start to talk, talk about toxic masculinity. Of course, because the men that they attracted mm. were psychopaths and narcissists. Well, yeah, because like the majority of men, the amazing men out there, they're not... They, they, they have their life fucking set but they're also so fucking afraid to say hi because they were never taught how to actually say hi because they were also taught by either their moms their dads their friends that if you say hi and if you get rejected like you'll get made fun of or you'll get judged yeah, it's, 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 and it's like it's, it's, it's fucked up dude and then you have like these two groups both genders wanting to be with each other but they're so in their fucking egos or emotional trauma well, well it, it, it's it's well you have several things. Like I say, I had like a mall when I was younger and I talked about pussies. <laughs> you know? yeah. but it, it's bad for like, say, say people that men that are not attractive to women. Yeah. And so you have five phases. The first phase is the shy one. And I know them because I've been all of them. Yeah. And the shy one is the one that, that, that doesn't dare to talk to women, you know, and just like me was studying and, and trying to <laughs> we're just like reading our thinking. fucking books like yeah. learning our pickup lines and we're, and, and, or, or we're, but it's an important phase because very often in this phase men build themselves a life for me I built my, my fight career my, my psychology my master's in psychology degree and you build yourself so mm. that, that's, a, that's a good phase but then you, a certain moment you say okay I have to start talking to women and then you get into the into uh, the it's, it's a phase two of the shyness where you try to, then you're the nice guy. Like the turtle. Like it's yes. like you're a nice guy and then you're like. Yes, exactly. And so, <laughs> but that, that's where all of the guys then keep stuck in. And yeah. then women are unsatisfied because they're, it's very clear they're very insecure. And because they're insecure, they will very often be not so good in bed. Mm -hmm. Two things, or they ejaculate too soon, or they can't get a heart on because they're always stressed. And, big, and so you have to be relaxed in your excitement mm -hmm. to be able to get hard, they be able to last longer. And third of all, if they train themselves to last longer, it's dissociated because they're just trying to perform, trying to make her to love him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that. So, but then a lot of guys see like, it's not so, that doesn't work. So what do I do? I'm gonna become what I call, call the, the yacht loser. The yacht loser, is the guy that that 
express his all the things that he does. So all his accomplishments. Yeah. And it comes from a, a story. I was with one of my best friends. We were eating tapas and we were gonna go to uh, the uh, uh, an after work party because it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> and and there were like there was this couple and they were talking and it was incredible. This man was the biggest tool ever. I'm sorry. So he started talking about in yeah, in Belgium. Get don't get me wrong. So yes, I went to Harvard. I got the scholarship. A scholarship, Harvard. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard when you have an accent and you put another accent yes. on that accent. <laughs> and uh, yes, now I'm working Harmon Sachs or some of those big yeah. law firms that I recognize the name. So like, like Goldman Sachs. Yeah, that was it. Harmon Sachs. <laughs> Goldman Sachs. I looked at my mate. My mate has to be, had to really push our laughter down. So yeah. we start to look at him and he, I could see, he see, yeah, saw us yeah. looking, so his chest popped up. <clears throat> yes, and I earn at least 50k a month. And my, man, my mate couldn't hold in more. says, wow, you must have an incredible car. Yes, I have the newest BMW A3. Like, this guy, this girl was going more and more under the table. She's like, why the fuck are you telling me She's all like, this shit? She's like, what the fuck is this, man? And I was like, I bet you have a boat. He's like, no, I don't have a boat. I have a yard. <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> so my mate, he went down, the girl was even lower. And so I was like, wow, it must be a very big yard. He's like, yes, 12 meters, man. We went down and we took the girl, we left the house. But it's like, it's a beautiful example of how men think that those external things is what yeah. women want. What do they want? Well, women want a man that can hold the space for her, that can provide direction, that knows where he wants mm. to go, that has an impact in the world. But and so, if you're successful, of course, you're gonna get interest because it's pure, it's pure for evolutionary perspective. But that's not enough. What women want is they want you to make her feel safe, to make her feel excited. That combination, not just safe. Yeah. Because then... It's you got to be safe. fucking safe, white picket fence, yeah, married so you, for 30 you wanna, years. You want to be safe, but exciting. So it's like, she wants to be feel safe with you, but with an edge. Like, she's not 100% sure. Yeah. It's almost like an oxymoron, right? Like, she wants the nice guy that's a bad boy. Yes. She wants the player that is also, like... Uh, sensitive. Like, sensitive. She wants a, someone that's polygamous, but yet monogamous. Yeah. It almost doesn't fucking make any sense. But, no, but it, like does, it does. It does. It, it, it is... Uh, it's about... All they want is for you to be really present. And authentic. Well, yeah. But yes, if you're not authentic, you're not really present. You're mm -hmm. in your mind. You're creating creating something. You're not there. And 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 she wants you to not when she goes up and down, the because women are nature. You know, yeah. it's like it's like energy is, is flowing. It's forever changing. If you go up and down with her, how she can she feel safe with you? If she gives you shit and you bow down as if you're a little servant, how can she trust that you will protect her and her? potential offsprings yeah. needs if somebody else tries to push your boundaries if you bend for her because inside she still feels like a little girl or like a feminine woman that hopes that she can find a man where she can be feminine with mm. where she doesn't have to worry about organizing things that he will take care of the things that he says he's gonna take care of yeah i think the best metaphor that i've ever fucking heard uh i was in a mastermind in thailand in coping yang with uh the mind valley peeps mm. And uh, there was one person, we, we were like uh, just all talking around a circle and we were having these like late night talk sessions, mm. which was just cool. It's just like open dialogue, everyone just talking without any judgment. Mm. And she was like talking about, I'm so grateful for Mother Earth. I'm so grateful for that. And then we got to the point where, oh my God, like Earth, rep like this planet represents what the actual feminine energy mm. is. I mean, what what is what is going on in this planet? There's so many different shit. There's like... It creates life, but there's also chaos. It's it's one giant fucking dance, and I don't say chaos is a bad thing. It's mm -hmm. almost just like, um, like it, expanding, right? This ever expanding feminine energy of creation and love and, and vibrance and, and destruction, of course, because you know women can like give your life, and then if you fuck like if you uh, mess with the wrong woman, dude, like they'll still fucking. Well, it's like, like it's like David Data says, yeah. like isn't the men are presence. Men have bliss in emptiness. You have a you have a goal. You have to go over 
bias, and then you're free because you have. Yeah, time. but but like. Think but then women, he mm. says, women are energy, are what brings life. Mm. It it is forever moving. He says. He it says, is. It is Earth. You know, yeah. it's planet Earth. Uh, he and says then, it's the sea. He says it's the sea. Sometimes it's calm. It's and take. Sometimes it's open. And but the man is the rock that can hold the space for the sea. There's the rock in the ground for to hold. Yeah, but is that the best metaphor? Because rocks get fucking destroyed by the sea, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, uh, but like, they do. What? What are this? What so, do you think that men, women do, man? <laughs> feminine no. is the planet Earth, and then we never thought. Well, all these planets are fucking like. In their female energy, why? Why is like, for example, a boat? Why is it always pronounced as a sheet? Right, all of these things, mm -hmm. and then we found out that what is, what is the masculine, and that's the space around the mm -hmm. earth. That is literally space itself. Mm -hmm. That's the masculine. Like, how beautiful is that? And it made you realize because, for example, um, like say, like I'm in a relationship, and then uh, the woman's like always like, oh, this problem happened at work, or oh, this shit fucking happened, and immediately, what do we want mm -hmm. to do as men? We be like, oh, I could fix this. I can fix this problem. It's like this Superman mentality of like, we could fix everything mm -hmm. when even though the women is selling you her problems, some of the times, like she doesn't even want you to solve them. She just wants you to hold the space mm -hmm. and allow her to go through that emotional um, dance that she's feeling right now. And for you to be the man to not fucking react to mm -hmm. any bullshit that she might be experiencing. Yeah, yeah. So to calm her down, to, 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 to hold her. Sometimes if she gives you a lot of shit, the only thing she needs you is to hold her. Yeah. But we always want to fucking solve I it. I understand. Like, I understand. You know? love. Come here. That's very often what they need. It's just really attention. Real attention. Yeah. Instead of going and fucking phone when you're out on a date. What the, hell, what the fuck is that? No. Put that phone away. Be with her. Put that shit away. So when you spend time. That's yeah. why like for entrepreneurs for sure. You don't have a lot of time. So when you. That's why I say. You say you have variety. You need to be. Variety, yes, but when you are uh, high level entrepreneurs, you don't have mm -hmm. the time to vary in time that much. Mm -hmm. So then, why it's then you and, and people don't like the idea of planning your sex life, but it's not it's not that to me. Variety is then in what you do and how you do it. Because if you say, okay, every Sunday is our time, that tells your subconscious mind that that is very important. You book it, you block it out that time, or it can change, but you block out time for yourself. It's time that you block out for something that is so important to our happiness, so important to our well-being, that is our intimate relationship. Mm. But if you don't do that, it's not going to happen. Yes. Because we get trained from a very young age that sex is the last thing, is like I said, is the black sheep. While it's so central to our happiness and our joy. Well, that's why were we building the business in the first place? Why did we want to get a fucking six pack in the first place? It isn't to just fucking look good naked. It isn't just to make a lot of money to buy a fucking yacht and a BMW. It's for some type of sexual intimacy with someone else. It's for that and it's for, for men, for sure, or for men, or men and women, actually. We want to make an impact in the world and want to be loved. Yeah. Both. We both that's have we those want. needs. That's it. We want to Simple. make an impact and... We, want to be we just fucking overcomplicate things. It's very simple. Fucking man. dumbasses. Yeah, man. So this is a great fucking conversation. Glad we had it. Uh, if you want to follow Nico, I will put it in the link in the description. And I will probably have him on many times talking about uh, sexuality, um, orgasms, and all this shit that or you know. Or performance, even. You're like, it's, or performance. It's... it's yeah. But like all the shit that you feel like you don't like if you wanted a bigger brother to tell you the shit that you were doing wrong or if you are a little bitch and you just want someone else to tell you, oh, hey, man, you're being a little bitch. That is kind of like who Nico was in my life. Mm. And uh, hopefully he could help you out. So for that being said, yeah. see you guys later. Bye.